champion. Like the newbie crack after that game. After all, newbie is a team that has suffered to actually be able to close out tournaments, right? Yes. They oftentimes fall second, third place, not really claiming the trophy of any of these lands. Especially overseas. <sighs> like they could do it domestically, like Jack pointed out, but this is uncharted territory, I would say. All right, our draft for game number four about to be unveiled. Nyx Assassin and Crystal Maiden have been the one-two bands from Evil Geniuses in our last two games. Newbie, every single game have gone for the Wisp Tree. This time around, Tree and Puck. Good call by my analyst. Okay, so not the one we expected though. I have to say, I'm surprised. I would have thought Tree would be the one you let through over the aisle. Maybe the thought that um, Tree is a simpler hero doesn't revolve around having a strategy dedicated to the IO, so maybe if they haven't been playing it all too much and you're, you're not uh, uh, very practiced on it, it might make more sense to go for a tree in that situation, so kind of understandable then. And Evil Genius is not opting to pick up the Wisp that was yep. offered to them. That was their right, his first pick, to be able to grab that one. Instead, they go to the Crystal Maiden, which was actually what they were doing in game number one, right? Banning Nyx and Sand King, those Kaka, versatile 3-4 heroes, and then also taking the Crystal Maiden away from uh, from Newbie. It, it could just be that EG feels like Newbie is not a strong IO team, so they are likely to not pick it up for themselves. Um, and they could grab it a little bit later. And you see Newbie, even though they have option to pick up the IO, they don't. Uh, but likely will be banned out on the second yeah, and I think this Disruptor is a fantastic pick. Uh, I thought it was one of the best played heroes they've had uh, on newbie side right. so far throughout this series, and it also counters out a lot of those heroes. Like, yes, the puck is gone, but the IO is still left in, so it's the IO plus one. It's a great counter to that. And then the Ember Spirit, too, coming out uh, from Sumail. Possibly, of course, the flexibility. We've seen it through this tournament. I don't want to completely discount it, but more than likely it will be Sumail in the mid lane, especially after such a performance like that. You've just got yourselves another counter, and we have this whole idea of how do you handle the clockwork during the draft expect him to go how can you prep your lanes for either this kaka hero running through and uh, just trying to disrupt as much as possible early on or that kind of mid-game pacing not too shocking to see the ball of light here disruptor and clockwork both being picked up uh, but we seem to see this ember spirit constantly grab despite disruptor being on the enemy team is Disruptor really not that good of a counter to Ember Spear? Is it not really that good of control? I think at this level, especially for some male, you expect to be able to himself the old combo. And again, if they expect some move to be made on some male in the draft, this is a hero that is, is a little bit flexible. There's still a lane possibility where they can give it to someone else. Uh, they can give it to Arteezy or run it in the safe lane. Also, you have the Crystal Maiden again, which as a high value first pick, takes it away from newbie. It just empowers all of your lanes that much more. I think picking that early is a big... You'll be going with the Clockwork, one of the rising heroes of the last patch and of this tournament as well. Again, being able to fill different roles, enabling multiple combos. I'd love to see what direction... Yeah, I mean, Disruptor, like you said, you could slight dodge the glimpse, but in the likely scenario where there's a big team fight going on, there's probably a lead stun that goes on the Ember just drop the Static Storm on top. So I, I think at the end of the day, Newbie is still very happy that they have the Disruptor into the Ember. At the same side, I, I don't think EG is like, oh my god, they have Disruptor, we can't pick Emperor. all. I, I feel like on, on both sides, they're relatively happy with, with the heroes that they got. Yep, I think uh, the Clockwork was also probably a little bit of a deny pick too. Certainly could have been an option there with the CM that's been one of his most successful allies when you're running it in that support role. A lot easier to uh, open those lanes. But Disruptor, yeah, he's just one step of the solution to the Ember Spirit. It'll be just like that Puck. You, know, you can do a lot of the same similar things to dodge or to glimpse with that hero. up against and uh, we will receive a ban on the enchantress so evil geniuses won't have to worry about the possible problems that uh, in that mid game not gonna ban away the drill ranger is there any danger of evil geniuses turning this into a fast push strategy I think with the ember core reveal the, the chance of that is actually relatively low right and you'd need a profit or something and NP work yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't think we're going to see a draw here. But uh, in terms of KP heroes, we will again lose ourselves the Enigma. And we hearken back to Tide Hunter. 
Up against the Emperor Spirit, very risky, of course. Got to make sure you're going to hit that Ravage. Certainly do not want to miss, and uh, I'm sure they're also going to want a little bit more information. Maybe we'll get ourselves a position one. Okay, right. it's going to be uh, still a little bit of that flexibility. We've seen plenty of the matchups of the Ursa versus the Ember Spirit in the mid, and uh, this will leave that option open for them as the draft progresses. So this is kind of like, hey, we're denying you the Sumail mid Ember. You could you could put it there. You're going to have a huge lane disadvantage. Uh, and of course, Newbie is a great Ursa lineup already. Uh, they picked that against Phoenix earlier today, but I, I, they they love the hero. They'll pick it without without Phoenix in the. I think he's also been very successful against Ember Spirit in a lot of drafts too. And any of these very elusive heroes, right? It only takes that one stun. You know, the multi-step solution. One Definitely. person just holds him in place. You try and burst him down as fast as possible. Flame Guard not going to assist you here. Evil geniuses need to try and figure out. Okay, so. But what do we do here? Like, where is our pacing? Uh, what are we going to find? Do we need to think about some other options in terms of the lane base? Because uh, they're not going to have that last pick. They're not going to have the final option to see where Newbie's going to send this bear. I wonder if we'll see a Tusk here. It's a hero that we've seen some teams favor a lot. I like the Tusk here. So, yeah. but it feels like some kind of save for all of the single target that you have useful for them, especially if that Ember Spirit does feel a bit vulnerable. Yeah, the Frozen Sigil in particular is not very effective against Ursa, but still it's just scouting for the Roshan and whatnot. But instead it's going to be a Kunkka. So my, my worry for EG right now is you have two backliners that have no defense for themselves when Ursa jumps on. Unless Kunkka hits a torrent on himself, which is, you might just be dead before your cast animation. Once the Ursa jumps in, so... EG is having a lot of confidence that the positioning is going to be good and they're going to have some really strong frontliners that Ursa needs to like bypass before he could jump to the back line. Figure out exactly what it will be for Universe as well for Evil. Saw plenty of the Darks here plus the Kunkka, so the combination of the boat, the vacuum, we'd have the Iron Shell combo on top of the Ember Spirit. Been pretty popular before, but he does suffer up against the Disruptor in lane sometimes, can control you, uh, boost Surge. And help build into four staffs though for the uh, the clockwork cogs. But indeed, we shall get our tide hunter. So we've already discussed kind of the issues that could be there up against the Ember Spirit. But with the heavy team fight coming in from the Kunkka with that rum buff, now if you can set up with the tide hunter, it's much like the song from the Naga Siren. Big AOE kind of control and try and layer on top with the static storm. So if they can get that right synergy between our tide hunter and our disruptor, you can just win team fight after team fight. Yeah, I think EG will once again stick with the three self-sufficient core type of they've had, especially since this is a double roam from the Cool Maiden and Conquer. All of the newbie heroes right now are a bit level dependent to reach optimal effectiveness, and that could be an issue for them if these two are going around just winning lanes. So what would you say a strong, self-sufficient safe laner would be that could go up against the Titan? Because we saw the effectiveness of uh, previously the Drill Ranger being able to kind of keep the Tide Hunter at bay, not able to get any sort of laning phase farm. You want a similar kind of strategy here. I feel like Weaver is a very strong pick here. You get the good lane against the Tide Hunter. It's it's tough against Disruptor, because obviously Glimpse into Static Storm is always a thing, but I mean, he already has to deal with the Ember, and uh, it's one of RTC's best heroes. Yeah. Do, do you think they would dare just raise her again? I mean, he is someone who can kind of feed off of the... Uh, oh, finally! He's here! Okay, so we'll get a different kind of a tanky hero. We've been talking Bristleback ignored completely throughout the series, despite being a major talking point for what felt like the past two best of threes before it. Every time we talk about Bristleback, we always mention Ursa's the hero that could beat him, right? Mm -hmm. Ursa's here. If you have the control that holds you in place for a direction, though, which is something that Stackstorm doesn't do. Despite being quite a bit of that, you know, control element, your silence and you everything, can still turn. you can still turn quite a okay. bit. So they do kind of still need something, it feels like, uh, from Newbie. Normally, we'd be, we would look to the Legion Commander with the Tide Hunter already up. So could be a Shadow, uh, like a Shadow Blade mid, someone to go for the Silver Edge, perhaps. Are we going to have Bristleback in our off lane or our safe lane? That's, that's a good question. This seems a little bit more unlikely with the picks right now, but Void is also a possibility that some teams back obviously with the time dilation or lockdown it doesn't synergize necessarily that well with their lineup though. i'm not sure if a newbie would go in that direction. yeah three other melee heroes one hell of a feat kind of like a uh alina perhaps from newbie if they wanted to just ship that ursa one of those silver edge carriers could give them quite a bit of right click even some additional stuns just to follow up uh, a very balanced hero could even think about perhaps an Invoker too, although we haven't uh, been blessed with one yet today. 
There's still a Shadow Fiend, a Silver Edge Carrier, the Batman Clockwork. suggests that they want to be safe lane. I still have that mid with the synergy with Wandering their way here on this last band for evil geniuses. What don't they want to see? What lanes don't they want? I wonder how willing they are to send that Ursa in mid lane as well. And, well, maybe, likewise, evil geniuses could still even pick up a separate mid hero themselves. They've got every single role open, potentially, right? Yep. They could do safe lane number, mid bristleback, off lane bristleback. Like, every single position could be open if they really wanted to change the lane. So they ban away the Storm Spirit, a frequent pickup versus the bristleback. We would do a fine matchup for Ember as well. And they go for the Darkseer. Okay. That combination. So, Kunkka, nice strong frontline hero with some sustain. Probably the best universe hero that's left, I would say, in this situation. If we were going to go that way, again, the Iron Shell, the Vacuum, very balanced draft here from Evil Genius. This is the kind of stuff we kind of look at for those like Game 3 scenarios near the end. This, you'd almost think it was best of five with something like that. But I feel pretty good about what Evil Geniuses have brought out. OD. Okay, so they're gonna mix it up and go for the, uh, the lane win. That's the thing here, though, with the Bristleback. We've seen it this hero run in all three lanes throughout this. So they didn't necessarily the lane with those. I like that from EG as a general theme, the drafting strength of this tournament. I think the OD was kind of cool too, because we were talking about how the Ursa, if he was up against the Ember Spirit, he was gonna be able to just probably have the safe win. Uh, but then we were thinking about these other heroes that could have helped their draft in some other ways, uh, be it through the control. Um, the Invoker comes to mind against the Bristleback because although he doesn't build a Silver Edge or anything, he does get that Minute Drain. And that one way, like, loss of this teamfight control. But instead, the OD, we can also work our way through there too. This is a Bristleback who's just in the middle of the fight. You're just kind of always stealing this in from him. You're being able to drain all of his mana and try and make him as useless as possible. Sounds like you're leaning... I'm going to go with Bristleback because that hero kept winning games, and I'm okay. surprised it took this long for him to show up, so I'm actually going to go with EG. Jack? I, I like EG as well. Work this game. We'll be able to match those rotations. I like newbie's draft that I Cap brought up. I, I don't know it's, it's, it's about the Dota. It's, it's just whether you're cracked or not. But I believe in them. t Alam. Go newbie. All right. Lumi back in newbie hardcore here. The rest of my panel says evil geniuses. Game number four, EG newbie underway. Toby Wan and Merlin. Something tells me when Lumi acts like that, this crowd is going to lynch him pretty soon. Either way, we got ourselves a game four rapidly approaching. Fun times around. We get to see the return of the Tide Hunter. Sad times too. This could be our last game. It could be, but maybe not. We all don't want to go to work. We all want to stay here and just watch Dota 2 until the wee hours of the morning. Early smoke coming out already from Newbie. Oh, it already got broken. Ping came out, so Kaku understands that Universe and Samael are here, so... Volume is a wonderful thing. Let's just crack a window for it. <laughs> I'm, I am surprised that Bristleback has taken this long to show up in this particular series. Don't have any good Silver Edge carriers on UB side to potentially deal with him later on. I think Ursa is actually pretty good at dealing with it. You can tank through, bursting him down with the Enrage, and you also just have massive amounts of damage that Paltry Br Bristleback won't be able to mitigate. Is it also one of those... Uh, one of those fights too where EG, like we've seen the Bristle back time and time again, just tank through and just extend these fights out so long, that seems to play more into the hands of OD. With every attack, just continue to steal more and more intelligence and build up more and more and more. However, they are probably going to have to build BKBs though. The T5 yeah. combination with a boat into the vacuum is potentially devastating. And there's yep. even easier setup for them too. Like Bristleback's good at making heroes clump up and fight around him. And Amber Spear is very good at also isolating heroes and potentially setting them up for big combos. Maybe this is also a game where the Crystal Maiden is able to have a, an effect that isn't just death. <laughs> Please, Arcane Aura, Toby. That delivers useful. death. She becomes the angel of death as opposed to the angel of, well... Her she's own a, demise. She's a snow angel. Snow angel? That's the old taunt. We use new taunts these times. 
All right, well, I guess we have fun on the matchup. So again, OD going up against the Ember in the mid. And it's Arteezy who's going to try and zone out KP on the top lane. A little bit more difficult for him to, to do that this time around, just because you will have a very tanky Tidehunter. KP's come prepared with a lot of tangos. The only thing he's got to be concerned about is the extra stacks on the quill. He does not have a magic stick and also does not have access to the side shop, however, so that's not good at all for KP. Wondering how uh, Mookie actually handles the bottom lane. Ursa versus the Darkseer. It seems like a lot of unwilling damage you have to take to the Iron Shells that continue to push out the lane. Yeah, that's not a good matchup for Ursa. He does very poorly against heroes that can shove in the lane. You don't want to be hitting creeps with Ursa. You want to be hitting heroes. Is it worth actually changing your item build up a little bit? Like, we, we've, we've seen Mugi go for the Vladimir, so maybe it's worthwhile like, getting a little bit of lifesteal earlier on just to give you that sustain in the lane. Let him focus kill off the Iron Shell creep and not worry about having to drag the creep wave underneath the tower every time. I think that's a big commitment because you could alternatively just pick up a Ring of Regen for a Vlad's later. And it should suffice. And Darkseer already heading over to the jungle universe, not about this lane. Disruptor, one of the better heroes I would say at killing a Darkseer, but he is still level one on a Darkseer. And SC's really trying to get up in Samael's face. Samael will burn his last bit of uh, regeneration. As he's still going to salve up himself and he's going to just steal a haste rune. Not a lot he's going to be able to do with that. But it's more just keep on top of Samael. Clockwork was starting his rotations as well. Kaka actually synergizes quite nicely with the OD imprisonment. Just walk in so then you get the cogs and the battery assault. Control up Samael so we cannot escape. But it's not great when the lane is shoved in so deeply onto EG's side of the map. One of the downsides of Astral, I would say. Not that. But... A lot of moving up on the top lane still, and that's something which be a little bit careful about when the Clockwork is the one who moves into the lane to leech a little experience. This is mainly because Tidehunter has backed off the lane just to farm up his own camps, to stack them up and farm them. So it's just more efficiency coming in from Newbie. Allow the Clockwork to get an earlier level 6, and EG they want to try and punish this if it's possible. With a two-man smoke maneuver, they go for SC, and he's a long way forward. This should be the first blood. Now, Samael is low on life. There is the defensive imprisonment available, and he's actually going to use it aggressively, keeping the Ember out. The Torrent will not connect, and support has arrived in the form of Raptors. Clever girl. Wow, can't believe they missed that Torrent. And he also went for the level one in Tidebringer on Zai. He does go for this build. Fairly often, I would say, but one level of X almost certainly would have secured that kill. Makes him wonder whether or not he regrets that one point. Yeah. Gotta get that farm on, though. Is it also to, like, help out with the stacks? Or, like, how do you... He's just relying on other people to set up for him, right? Mm. Like, the Ember Spirit root and the Frostbite should be sufficient Well, he, he can potentially die. Bounty Rune gets stolen. Kaka starts with the Battery Assault. There's no support really coming to him, but that level 2 Battery Assault, it should be enough damage to kill off Zai for the Torrent. It creates just enough space. Kaka, he has the movement speed. The Battery Assault will wear off. One little swing will not be enough. Dropping the Observer Ward behind the tower. But now Zai, what do you actually do here? He's got no consumables. Yeah. He has to okay, he has to take the consumable. He takes the sal from Arteezy. Seems pretty necessary at that point. Mm-hmm. Sumail keeping up fairly well in terms of CS, actually. Mid lane. Out. Imprisonment? No, they get the wall up instead. Sumail can't get back to the tower. So clockwork. Searing chains keeps him away. Ooh, I think he was just out of range for Astral too. Ideally you'd Astral during the root so that you can close the distance after the root ends, but Perfect timing on that. And waiting for the five minute shrine on the top. So Ember can get straight back to lane. But it's a little bit worrisome for Newbie in the early game when KP hasn't been able to find that much farm. Darkseer has been free farming for quite some time. And Ember Spirit getting the best of the three lanes. Maybe he's still fine there with KP. Like his CS is obviously inflated. Just like, as in between his net worth and his CS, the difference will be large because it's all from the neutral camps. Uh, and none of them being the Ancients. But you're still getting him close towards level 6. Crystal Maiden, in that glimpse, it's a little bit too far away. Faith, he's trying to get in front of Crit to body block him up and allow Kaka to close that distance. Not to mention Moogie. Moogie would love to find himself a kill. Faith, 
Still continuing this run, and there's the wall. But Crit has now wasted time of three heroes. The Cogs will trap him in. If he actually gets a night up right now, this will be a disaster. But Moogie will take it. Drawing first blood on the Crystal Men, giving that extra cash to the Ursa Warrior. And normally you would say Space Creator, but for first blood, I think that's worth it for Newbie. It is. That extra money into him. And you can see the quick buy from Moogie. He's already preparing himself for the phase boots, plus the extra lifesteal top lane. KB's being dove right now by Arteezy. You do have the X mark spot, but you don't have the distance in KP underneath that shrine. Gonna be out of fight. Kaka coming in from behind as well. If Arteezy wants to keep up with this, he does have five stacks currently on KP. The distance created. Quick bounding roost on the battery assault. Arteezy, he wants more. That's four stacks over on the clockwork. Make it five back to the safety of the tower. Arteezy going in deep. He's got the creep wave with him. That's the protection available. The KP, now the stacks are gone. The Raptor is arriving. It's Disruptor. They've got more help. Crit and Zai, but Arteezy easy walled up at the moment he can't make his way to mexico without frost him up so at least newbie will not continue the chase against dg one mango actually two mango consumed by bristleback not that great for him he's actually going for a vanguard first a little bit surprising considering the heroes that he's up against ursa hits so hard that the damage block is not that good a lot of pure damage coming out from the uh coming out from the od but great for farming Tizi's going to come back up to the top lane, but KP's very happy with the situation. Okay, root and mid. Samael. Well, okay. Trade one for one. As far as harassment from harassment. It's bad that the OD feels pressured, though, in this lane. Samael was able to take the last room. Oh, B, speaking of pressure, quick jump forward with multiple spirits. Samael finds the kill on SC. Can Faith punish him, however? Keeping the chase going. He has glimpse of Valble, the vision is up, some mail now being pulled back underneath the tower, oh. but no! Slider Fist dodging the glimpse back! He'll put the spirit down inside his TP home. They can see the spirit on the front line, he doesn't really want to come forward to that, Niji is asking for a pause from the chat wheel. The pinnacle of individual play as a mid laner has come out from Sumail in this tournament. Just small plays like that. He's so good. Bottom lane, maybe a little bit of trouble for Universe on the run. Now Ravage commits. <laughs> Actually just clips him on the edge. Important kill for them too. Darkseer is their main team fighter, I would say. And without the mech being picked up by the Bristleback, which I don't think he should have, but you need one mech carrier, I would say, on their team. Yep. Glimpse, gonna pull back. Kanku did get the X marks to spot again, EG, and the taunt as well. You know Newbie can see that they flared it up with the clockwork. Yeah, I think some influence from other teams' drafts. We see, yeah, Kunka picked up more commonly so versus the Disruptor, Bristleback, also rising to the forefront, and EG adopting stuff from other teams, but executing it with their own little flair. Yep. But at the same time, Newbie. They still have an Ursa getting a lot of momentum. He can look towards Roshan, EG. It's the question mark as well. We had it previously when Newbie had this Ursa. Can they contest Roshan? Do they have the ability to take the fight against Newbie? Should also note Ravage is down for 83 seconds because of that kill on the bottom lane. But he has the best Roshan build too with the 0-3-4. You want Max Fury swipes, you don't need Earthshock at all for this. And there is little chance for them to go inside. The positioning from UB, the fortification, is incredibly difficult for EG to penetrate. The Dire Observer was seeing enough. X marks the spot. No one's going to get inside that pit. Zai just tried to go for the torrent. This time, though, they didn't waste that much time for Faith. To go for the road He's going to glimpse Arteezy down. The wall is up. Arteezy will be contained. And Mugi already starting up with a couple of stacks. No, the cogs pushing Arteezy away. It burns the mana, yes. But they wanted to trap him in there with the Ursa Warrior. That was the intention, but not the result. Four staff first will be the build for Darkseer. Very concerned about the clockwork in this game. And they don't have good four staff fires on their team. I suppose it's Crystal Maiden, but she's going to be the poorest of the bunch. Forward thinking from EG as they look for a way to claim these team fights. Newbie, they're certainly going to play around the Ravage, going to play around the 
the Aegis, and the best way for them to do that is to force objectives. And EG, you either need to split push or have stronger team fight of their own. Run, crit, run! Three. Oh, X marks as well can play around on the bottom lane. That's just gonna throw Kaka up. Crit does get back to the tier two tower. The vision. Boogie couldn't get there in time to give the vision to get the glimpse. But they understand with the Aegis Immortal, EG will not want to fight him. The Ravage is back up for KP. So trade-off is what they want. That bottom tower still up. It's in well within deny range. Kaka pushing back Universe. They're going to fight on top of the cogs, burning a lot of mana here. But if they kill off Kaka, Battery Assault, Universe's Iron Shell, a point blank range hook shot. Well, he had it. May as well throw it. Glimpse. They find crit. That doesn't get him back in range of the wall. Might also reveal the fact the Observe Ward's up on top of the hill. If it's has had a lot of trouble connecting with these kinetic fields. And that's their main disable, I would say, in this early game. If Clockwork's not there to lock them in with cogs, they have very difficult to execute disables. Even Ravage is not going to be the easiest spell for them to hit. Yep. Crit did work it out straight away. So the ward went down. He hasn't put down a fresh one of his own, and, uh, well, start your run. Ursa Warrior, crit triggers with the phase boots, and a perfect glimpse this time around. Crystal Maiden gets mopped up. The Torum was going to create a little bit of space, but the kill was just so fast, there's no way for EG to really react to it. They need to utilize the Bristle, though. The, the Bristle has been farming a lot, but Newbie are steamrolling towers right now. He is strong enough to the point where he can go in and fight, but if he TPs in, he just gets glimpsed back. TPs are coming. Kaka. Well, he's got Hookshot off cooldown in two seconds time, and it managed to isolate Zai. They trap him inside the storm, a quick four stop. Hookshot out, Kaka does manage to hold him. A quick glimpse, nope, that's not gonna work. Already imprisonment was used. The funny thing is the glimpse does still work with that. KP holding the Ravage, four heroes pretty close together. Crit gonna get gushed up, Arteezy comes in. Samael could buy Universe, the only person not hit by that Ravage, but he just jumps in. There goes your Spirit Jump. But SC has to take that Ember Spirit out. They wanna keep fighting. The Courier gets sniped off in the meantime. That was the Radiant one. Back to life from the Agassi Mortal. A quick TP out, is there a stun? Is there anything? Yes, there is, that's the Frostbite. Available from Crit. Meanwhile, around the shrine, the ship flies in, and right now he's trying to win solo. The man, the conquer, he wants to crack the melon. The Darkseer Wall will help out. EG, underneath their own shrine, will win, and Zai taunting on 1 HP under the corpses of Nubi and away from the Ancients, which are also threatening his life. Boat OP, that damage reduction with the shrine, he was affordable at that point. And finally, they get a good mileage out of the Bristle back. Very smart move for RTT to TP onto the T2. If he had TP'd onto the T1, that would have been a disaster for them. They actually had the CM TP in. RTZ TP back to the T2. He got glimpsed, but only back to the T2. And was They're able gonna go to again. connect in. Kaka, he's pinging out. He wants to go for Arteezy, at least if he can lock him in. Hook shot. There she goes. They're still too close towards the tower. And with an extra force up already up from Universe, they pushed Arteezy into safety. Defensive imprisonment will save the clockwork after his initiation, and maybe, well, Arteezy's still in a little bit too far. Glimpse and Storm are available, but newbies still don't want to fight this. They don't have the Aegis Immortal again. They have to change plans now. They failed the first Aegis push. They weren't able to claim the T1 tower, and the Bristle is proving to be much more than they can handle. And they, I guess theoretically you could kite him with the... Uh the cogs and the battery assault and the astral but it's way too difficult for them to maneuver around so right now i think they need to take a step back farm for a little bit play around the next roshan where you can get eg to come to you instead of eg sitting right oh, behind cogs. the trap she was on a mission a mission of death crit no. just wanting to ward in a little bit deeper but unable to do so that was gonna be their protection ward so arteezy as he does this push on the bottom lane doesn't feel as intimidated, but Kaka looking to hit the goal onto Arteezy, and well, Arteezy walks straight into it. The wall is down. They can just start battery assaulting him up. You still have the storm available, so a quick hook shot. The cogs keep pushing him away. Arteezy walks back into it. Kaka will find the kill. Faith, maybe a little bit of overcommitment with the storm. I think it was important for them. He didn't walk back into it. He got four stepped out by the Darkseer, but the cog positioning from Kaka was perfect right there. That is the way you play around Force Staff. If you trap him inside, you just Force Staff out. But if you trap on the other side, if you Force Staff, he just gets knocked back by another cog, Sumail. Quick jump out. That tower's within deny range now. 
So they might lose the money. Oh, Samael glimpsed down, but again, Samael, you can't touch this. X back just for extra safety. And Sumail still claiming that very high net worth of it. And he's been doing an excellent job of dying very few times. I think he had only two total deaths this game and... Or last game, and this game hasn't died yet. If he does die, like... You always feel like even if EG get backed into a corner, you can still just BT out with with a very escapable Ember Spirit. And he can just get X marks back as well. It's... You can almost play this the way you'd almost play a Tinker, except you just don't have the Rhea. Yeah, and I think they've been over-relying perhaps on the Disruptor as a hard disable. When perhaps something, you know, Lion, Shadow, Shaman, these heroes have much more reliable jumps versus the Ember Spirit. Because you got that instant burst damage before a reaction can come from EG. And Hex is as good as any. Kark is on the hunt again. Quick Observer Ward down, of course he's right underneath the Dire Observer. So they understand what's going on. Bai starts his TP. And they both will escape. Not going too far. Zion only went back to the tier 2 tower on the top lane. OD going back to farm. He has picked up an early hand of Midas. Yep. So just need to sit back, play around the Roshans for a little bit, and take it easy. No need for them to force some fights right now. Whereas EG, they just need to farm up as much as possible around the map and consider when the right time to strike around the Roshan pit is. You can also see the desire of SC, right? Like it's like the Hurricane Pike gives him the distance to still keep attacking into Arteezy without having to take the damage of the Quill Sprays. Exactly. I think the Hurricane Pike is going to be huge in being able to deal with the Bristleback. Or Samael. They see Kaka. They would love to go on it. He moves around the corner. So Samael now reveals himself. The Cogs are up. Torrent. Well, Kaka is just out of range of it until he walked back into the boat. He doesn't have enough damage. So he has to start the run. The Hookshot bought space. And the wall from Faith is perfect. Samael caged like a lion. And KP wants to make something out. There's a quick stick charge. Universe. There's your force off going to work again. And another great Torrent from Zai. Catching both Kaka and Faith. As they want to continue the pursuit. But were denied. Kaka is surprisingly tanky for a clockwork with very few survivability. He has just a little bit of strength from his items right now, but he's able to survive despite the veil burst from Ember. So Roshan gonna respawn very, very sh soon. Actually, yeah. maximum respawn, but still soon nonetheless. Yeah, just two, uh, two minutes, 20 seconds until Roshan is up. EG have no way to get vision inside the pit. A torrent? I suppose. But that's. Very little. Remnant yeah. does not get vision. It's actually one of the very, like the first lineup almost in this, in this grand final, which doesn't have good control over Roshan. Well, the other game they had good vision of the pit, but they didn't actually have good fight in the pit. I think this time they can perhaps park the bristle there. Normally you're okay with tanking with a bristle, but versus an OD you don't want to get hit at all. Yeah, if and that's that's what you see him building in. Like he's got the solar crest available. He's got a talisman of evasion in his quick buy. Yeah, evasion is evasion and like Ghost Scepter, generally the two defensive items is cores versus an OD. Mm -hmm. But Ghost Scepter not particularly good. We mentioned with KB before where he likes to go for these uh, like these lifestyle items. Something that's going to keep him alive, the mech, the pipe. He's managed to finish up the hood, but he also purchased the, the earlier Blink Dagger. So he's got that jump and initiation to work with, Faith. Wait, did he actually kill off Crit here? They go one-on-one, -on -one. the wall is up, the Storm is committed, actually triggering onto the Bristleback is right on top of the ramp. So Arteezy can't get aggressive into it, but with Storm down, maybe they feel they can fight. Samael is there, but there's your also four star from Newbie. SC who finished up his pushing Disruptor away to safety. Could have been dangerous for both sides. Only for Newbie to group up for their own smoke. Currently, they are carrying one on the Disruptor. But we're tied under Ravage available. The Blink Dagger is on the Ursa. This Yule's pickup by Kaga could potentially be pretty big, too. They don't have a good way to catch out the Ember, but with the Yule's into a Cog's pushback, that might be enough for them to chain disable him after that. Here we go again. 
It's the smoke from EG. They want the fight before Roshan's done. In fact, they're looking directly towards Roshan, thinking that Nubi should be in it. And it's understandable. You assume that this fight is on in Roshan because it's almost max spawn time. Instead, they find a better target. It's SC. The torrent won't be out chained properly. A quick glimpse, pulling Samael away in a defensive imprisonment. Done from the OD, giving Samael the desire to go underneath the tower and goes one-on-one -on -one with SC. The searing chains will burn him out. And SC feeling very defensive and Samael able to capitalize. And really heavily, 40 seconds with no buyback. EG can look to Roshan. <laughs> Newbie could do the same with a rocket, however. They had their ultimates, however. They didn't have Static Zone for that fight, but now it has cooled down from the failed attempt earlier. Bristlepack, I don't think he has enough damage to solo it on his own. He is constantly casting solar on it, but it is a slow and steady kill. Yeah, as long as, uh, like, the mid lane, they smoked up. So EG uncertain to the positioning now of Nubi, and this is going to be enough to get Arteezy to leave Roshan. And with their earn up, he is very scary. But Simply. OD's alive. It's still scary for an OD because he can't attack at will. He has to worry about the Ember jumping him. Arteezy, they're trying to glimpse him away from the Observer War. The perfect Searing Chains catching Faith. They're going to amplify them up with the Veil of Discord as well. But with the Cogs, there's just no way for EG to get properly up the ramp. Not safely and not with mana. The Bristleback is now rivaling the Tidehunter. Do they want this? In the front line. No, they don't. He is not the target to go on. <laughs> Do we not learn that lesson before with Eternal Envies? Well, counter to that is just positioning yourself in the way that they have to go on you. Into the pit we go. Lockwork Rocket again, providing that vision for Newbie. Taka knows with a good hook shot he can split this fight. He does get brief vision of the other cores moving to the north side, so he can suspect that they're potentially to the north side of the pit, as opposed to the right side where the shrine is. That rocket still again. Negative 9 armor on Roshan, he's down to 2.4k, Arteez, he doesn't want to finish this. He needs to regen up for just a little bit, 13 one charges are available, so Arteez has a lot more to fight with. They go back in, Newbie still waiting for the perfect opportunity, the tense situation around the pit. They want to go, the Ravage is ready, but EG's positioning, everything's on the back lines, crit lets the ult to go, it's more cover and KP, it's a five man Ravage, Roshan taken by the Radiant, Hurst have picked up the Aegis Immortal, a three man back wall however, maybe they can start turning this one around EG, they've already brought down the OD and Arteezy, he wants to fight, he's low but the one charge has given that extra boost, the Aegis Immortal triggered on the Ursa, can they mop up the extra pieces, no they can't, that disrupt the wall, lock them there, but then again, who are you really locked in with, Moogie trying to man fight this up but he just can't do it. Even X marks the spot, drags him away from his meat. Such a perfect Ravage coming out from KP, but no follow-up. They weren't cl clumped up enough for a good Static Storm, and there was just no burst, no Sandy's Eclipse even cast by the OD. He didn't have any end to steal at the start. Why even cast it? At least Ursa picked up the cheese. But small spoils from a fight that Newbie desperately wanted to take. Yep. And it was the perfect initiation. We talked about KP with his Batrider in the last game, getting those early initiations off perfectly. He hit five heroes. Obviously, the Crystal Maiden was the easier one because you were standing still, but... They had the opportunity. And then you could look to Universe. That walk into the back wall caused real chaos for Nubi. Yep, no BKBs up yet for them. Still very, very vulnerable to being ping-ponging around the fight. They will go for BKB next on the OD, not focusing on the Hurricane Pike, realizing that he needs to deal with all these spells on the fight as opposed to being able to deal with the Bristleback. Ursa's gonna have more problems. Arteezy's going for him, he's got a fresh Hal, but Arteezy knows he's basically immortal at the moment. Yeah, there's just no way they're gonna build MKB this early to deal with him. So right now, when you go full defense on Bristle like this, you just have to kite him. But kiting is just not so simple. Not when Arteezy just running directly at you. Yeah, 43% evasion and then the, the bristle back to it. It's just, you, you also have no way for him to face you. You have no silver edge, no true strike, just no way to deal with him. That's why it almost looks like they're trying to kite him with that Diffusal Blade build from the Earth, so burn off a little bit of the mana and just keep slowing him down. Either that or they change the target. Maybe we have to start thinking about Samael. Do they try and jump in, remove that flame guard, keep the lockdown and just 
murder him quickly, so then you can focus on the Bristleback. You do, but Sumail knows that he he is the one that cannot get caught out. Similar to last game, you never saw him as a last target because he was, just simply did not make himself available. Just play around the Bristleback, let him get a vision. If you are unsure, just position yourself around the pit. And I really like how easy positioned themselves there. Normally, you'll see them all to the south of the shrine just clumped up for a good rabbit. You think the high ground is good, but it's the small choke that actually is the downfall of that fight. So they spread out, sacrificing the high ground for better spread so they don't all get ravaged. Oh, Artiz is going to take this tier 2 town without any kind of contest and without any kind of trade. Nubia is still trying to regain control of their mid as well as top lane. And Artiz hitting at 225. Not too bad for a level 15 Bristleback who's gone for primarily surviving items. And they can keep going. As we said, Arteezy feels immortal. 11-1 charges up his sleeve as well. He's got Universe to lend the pipe. Potential ship save. But they're gonna leave. They already managed to force Newbie to return home. At least they finally got that prize T1 in the mid lane. Will make Roshan contest a little bit easier. They're not interested in fighting right now. Yeah, they have Ravage, but as has been proven in the prior fights, Bristleback is way stronger than Tide Hunter for the team fight, based on the damage output and the team uh, damage output and his tankiness. Well, in a way, I think Nubi has just read this maneuver from EG correctly. They know EG are going to push for the last real remaining out of towers, especially that last tier one tower up on the top lane. But they don't have everyone. KP still sitting in the mid. They're going to try and initiate in. Hook shot up. The Yule Scepter. Make sure when he comes down, it's inside the storm and some mail will fall. 55 seconds on the sideline. Now Arteezy wants to make his play. Crit letting it go. They're locked inside their own cogs. The ship, Torrent and Wall. Nowhere to run. Nubi being crippled on the top lane. Two heroes down, well worth the trade when Samael does die, and they might have another one. Defensive imprisonment from SC having to be used to save his disruptor, but what does Faith really have left to give apart from his life? That is actually it, and they may lose more SC, burning that BKB of his. But with Nubi having only the Tide and the OD remaining, they cannot contest EG on this top lane. Yeah, they read that movement well, but not well enough. EG were all sitting behind Sumail. If they just got the clean Sumail kill, sure, that would have been great for Nubi. But EG, as mentioned, all grouped up, ready to push that T1 tower. And perhaps they just give the Aegis next time to Sumail, as, as if Arteezy's ever going to die. Right now, he's fine. He's got a lot of money up his sleeve as well, so that next, if he wants to go tanky item, if he wants to increase that armor of his, he's able to do so. You'll set it from Kaka, pulling up Arteezy, lock him inside the cogs. You do have that Conker Boat available, but on the back lines, it's where Moogie is initiating and the Spirit to jump down the Ravage from KP. Space to be created, the ship has actually slowed down a lot of the damage, allowing Arteezy to find up against SC. He throws the ulti out, trying to kill off Universe, who just basically runs the circle. The storm is down. Arteezy locked down. Finally, SC will fall. The torrent can tr torrent control him. KP once more. Arteezy, the tank, the man who survived for so long, will finally die. Wow, that was an amazing play by that Ursa coming in from the right side. And crit, 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 oh. solar! Sumil didn't have a remnant down beforehand. As soon as he got defusal, he tried to drop a remnant, but he hardly moved and wasn't able to distance himself away from the Ursa. And that was the start of the bad fight for EG. And as you mentioned, the target selection priority is incredibly important for Newbie. Try and ignore the Bristle as best you can. He did get Astral and Cogs, and they were able to take out the backline of EG before Bristleback was able to do his thing. To be honest, I thought EG's support was gonna kick in a lot harder. Like I was waiting for that ship to be right on top the second RTZ was cogged up, but... But they had already lost the mail. Yeah, at the start of the fight. It was just chaos, but that's the issue, right? You fight between the tier 2 tower as well as the shrine, no matter how confident you feel, it's a lot easier for Nubi to pin through in that position. EG were expecting it to be a much smoother fight with the DKB. Oh, here's a Yule Scepter again. Kaka trying to create space and catch out crit. At least reveals the fact the water's there, has his own hookshot glimpse, pulling him back, and Moogie, he wants the kill. And he will have the Crystal Maiden. Kaka's just throwing himself out there. They don't have good burst actually on EG unless they commit a lot of remnants. They still looking to fight. I suppose the Crystal Mage is the one down, but the hook shot's up for Kaka. Throws the rocket out, doesn't get the vision. Not the TPing out, Ember. But they do see his spirit. So if they want to camp it, 
They could wait for they could wait for him to return. And looks like Samael has no desire to do that at the moment. Too risky. Radiant Observer Ward did see. Bristleback pick up the Arcane Rune. That is not a fight you want to take. It's easy to ignore him if he doesn't have these. If he's just not spamming quills. But with the Arcane Rune, it's too much damage to ignore. The second four staff's now been done. So with Yule Scepter and Glimmer Cape to already interrupt the targets that EG are looking to focus on. Then you got the double four staffs, the double blinks. A lot of maneuverability available here for Newbie. That kiting we're talking about against the Bristleback is becoming more and more possible. Even though EG also have a lot to work with. But right now, Bristleback is the, is the frontline tank. His intimidation of damage is something that only comes over time as the stacks build up. And Samael is moving himself into also a defensive item. So is this when EG had to slow up the pace of the game? Is this when Newbie actually bring the damage, bring the superior team fight? Once they get the BKB on Ursa, they can. He is very, very close to the BKB. Otherwise, you're worried about him just being kited. And they're looking for that sweet spot before Mookie is ready. And well, they're coming. Smoke. He does have cheese, though. They have the vision. It's the Observer Ward just up the hill. So Ursa gets hit, gets his Enrage off. So he will be able to survive that little bit longer. Tidehunter in the neighborhood. Does he trigger the cheese? No, he doesn't. Ursa, without buyback, actually accepts his fate. Luckily for Newbie, Roshan's not going to respawn for another minute. Sad times for Bristleback. That's a lot of time. That's always in the later portion of the spawn time. Hmm? Crit's going to be sad about that one. Well, TZ going to assault the mid tower. KP. With a gush, he drags the creep wave off the tower. And more onto RTZ. They don't want to commit to, the, to, the, to this too hard. Arteezy could easily be on the other side of the tower with his back facing towards the Radiant base, but realizing that Ursa could potentially buy back and set up for a good fight, he will put it a little bit safer. Yes, the Clockwork Rocket was able to scan out the movement from the other EG players. So Kaka understands what's going on. 32.25 gets pinged. You still have another 27 seconds until Roshan. Both teams are ready. Kaka? Okay. Put down a sentry ward of his own. I think he's trying to find that aggressive vision that EG have. He'll have to look up on top of the hill if he wants to find it. At least it's not in the normal spot. The normal spot gives him way too much vision for Newbie to be comfortable with. And without that, they can perhaps blink across into the pit if they don't have vision on the high ground and stick with Ursa. And that always has to be a lurking thought in EG's mind. It's Ursa and Roche, but he's actually just still farming up his BKB. He, he did yeah. buy two pieces before he died, so he's mm -hmm. still pretty close to it. Yeah, just needs the recipe. He's at 1100, so just just under 300 gold away from having it. And EG, it takes so long for them to still kill off Roshan. So this is their other problem, that Ursa can probably complete his BKB in time, or does he? The TPs are coming in. you got a fresh Hurricane Pike over on SC. That's a negative on the BKB. He's going to have to fight this one without it. No, he's trying to farm. This is just harassment. SEL Hurricane Pike himself up to safety is all delaying. Moody is so close. He's 100 gold. KP getting caught out. The torrent won't connect. Faith is enabled underneath the sentry one. That's why Arteezy is able to hit KP. Pushed away to safety by his own four staff. And EG won to fight. And Ursa, there it is. He now has the BKB. Courier will bring it out. And he moves over quickly towards Roshan. This clockwork with Rocket Flair. Very annoying for EG to deal with, but they will have to fight with full vision. Here they come. SC has the vision inside, tries to hit RTZ. Torrent's going to miss. That range on Halberd, though. Roshan's so low. They know they have to end this. EG need to take this fight. Samel has to get set searing chains off. Clockwork, hookshot at himself in, still has the cogs. Doesn't want to throw it down because he's going to block his own team out if he's not careful. That's why SC goes for the defensive imprisonment. Roshan still insanely low. Another rocket gives the vision, but that's the BKB Ursa looking for his target. Can't find a hero, so he's moving in. He's trying to steal Roshan from Arteezy. Will he have enough? Hitting Arteezy as well as Roshan. The torrent will come in. KP triggers the ravage, and Roshan, the Aegis Immortal, is snatched out by the Ursa Warrior. SC holding on to the Eclipse. He wants the big target. Arteezy almost gone. They continue to steal the intelligence from him. Arteezy will fall. 70 seconds on the side. Line. No one else for EG to kill, uh, for newbie to kill. 
So EG will retreat. He had to expect to get Ravage there. Maybe... I I think Samael was trying to identify where the Tidehunter was. At least stop his Blink Dagger with a sleight of fist. Ideally hit him with a chain so he can stop it with a, for a Blink for a little bit longer. But KP sat outside patiently, waited until it was very low. I think the Ravage did set off a Quills so that Bristlepack did get the last hit. But it's still Aegis onto uh, the Ursa. And then the Chief went the way of Tidehunter, who has passed it along to his teammate, SCCC. So they give the extra life in for SCC during the next engagement. So you have both Aegis and Cheese on the Ursa. Again, they're starting to rack them and stack them here, Ruby. Zai was really close to predicting the Blink Ravage though with the Torrent. Had that happened, oh my god, would that have been a big fight for EG. And he was extremely close, maybe just half a second off from that. They try to set it up, but that's... Slightly wishful thinking, although certainly worth going for that play. That Observer Ward will finally be brought down. It's in the, like, the last minute of its life. And then the new one planted just out of range of the Radiant Sentry that was down. So Crick continues the vision advantage. A Blink Dagger will now arrive in for SC. He needs to be able to get some Arcane Orbs off in the fight. He is constantly getting disarmed or he's missing and there's not any one single item that's going to help him do that. If he BKBs, he still has to deal with the 43% evasion and if he gets Link, it's to prevent the Halberd, he still needs to deal with the evasion. Is it worth just going in for a Monkey King bar? And uh, It's just not great on OD though. I, I don't disagree, but if you're not hitting, you're not hitting. And he's going for the Shiva's Garden his quick fight. The Monkey King bar is being purchased. But it's not by the OD, it's done by the Ursa. For the Ursa, it's fine. For the OD, it's just you want more int because you just you want to be able to kill everyone else. Like maybe you can just I, ideally ignore the Bristleback and go for everyone else. But right now, I think Bristle beats BKB so he can fight without getting destroyed and kited. Is the only anti anti kiting item that I think he can go right now. Well, he did switch it. Yeah. It's, in, it's in the quick buy after picking up the plate mail. So at least his armor is half decent. It is. He, he has to be able to get in the fight. Normally you just walk into the fight as Bristle, but when you get piped, you're not in a good spot. And then after you get piped, if you keep running forward, you're still going to take a lot of Arcane Orbs on the front, and you have to back off even further potentially to prevent all those Arcane Orbs from hitting. So it's, it's not easy for Bristle. Well, there it is. The BKB is done just under the 38-minute mark. And I think they'll probably actually scan it out with that rocket. So now they can devise their... Game plan according. I don't actually know if they scan it out. They could have if they clicked exactly. They're smoking without the Ursa Warrior. He's still pushing out the bottom lane. So they want to fight without the damage that comes from the Ursa. Quick Observer Ward down. Doesn't see Samael TPing away. Who could they kill? They could kill Ember with a Ravage. Bristle is the only target no they way. currently have available. And Kunkka is not too far away. Zai is running the defense. There's your Yule Scepter up and towards the air. Put him down. Where is that Storm? It's not controlling up Artizi. The BKB, they can't even bait it down. Artizi knows he doesn't need to use it. The X marks the spot. Looking to bring back Kunkka into the ship. But the defensive imprisonment cancels the fun. KP ready with the Blink Ravage. But no Artizi hitting with the Cool Spray. He couldn't get close enough to the fight. Split up. You'll lose the Disruptor. You Universe, however, so much damage from NC, but stopped! Crit was able to hit him with a Frostbite. Now it's Kaka trapped inside of his own cogs, looking to run away, but Samael right over him, ready to burn him down. Now you're ravaged from KP, create a little bit of space. Samael does finally pick off the clockwork, but SC looking to hold him just a little bit longer. Keep the Brisk back out of this fight. And now they're chasing the Searing Chains. It's on the Ursa. He's got Cheese plus Aegis. He'll burn the Cheese to start with. Looking to find up against Arteezy. BKB still on cooldown for a while. As Moogie will retreat. I'm surprised he burned the Cheese there when he did have the Aegis in tow. But eh, he is a little bit confined for items. He doesn't really want to hold the Well, for the Aegis, the Immortal actually times out in, tw in 10, 20 seconds. His teammates were coming in from the north side, so he thought they could get a kill, but the surge right at the Diffusal Blade quelled any attempts at that. He's actually burned so many Diffusal Blade charges too. Yeah. He's already on the second wave of Diffusal. That's going to be a, an item he just can never get back. Yeah, that's when you have to rely on the clockwork to be able to trap heroes in or disrupt it with the glimpses. But it's wow. been very tough for them to 
isolate targets and keep them in attack range. And KP's got so much money, he just finished a refresher orb on this Tidehunter. I have no idea how he farmed that. And I don't actually think he'll have mana issues. Normally you do, and normally you'll see mangoes picked up, but he has Essence Aura, so you don't have to cast them back to back. If you're Tidehunter, just maybe wait for a proc or two and you're good. Wonderful thing if you're a newbie, the team fight just becomes even better for you. I, I think this is going to come as a big surprise to EG, this uh, double ravage. It's very problematic as well. You trigger your first BKB and, well, none of these heroes from EG are refresher buyers. So they will probably, you know, it's almost a guarantee second ravage unless you can kill the Tidehunter beforehand and you're not wanting to commit to kill the Tidehunter. Certainly not. And I think the double ravage is going to be imperative if they want to kill the Ember Spirit. Like twice the stun duration on him for a hero like Ursa who needs those precious few tenths of seconds to burst down heroes. This Lincoln Spirit isn't going to save Ember Spirit at all. <laughs> now it's up to EG how they want to try and take this fight again. We could be just playing around Roshan. He seems to be the most popular person during this grand final. Second only to the free goal that is Crystal Maiden. Party in the pit. The newbies still feel like the masters of that just because of their vision play. They're always counter initiating into EG in the pit. But now they have BKB up on, on Bristle, so if they wait too long, he just BKBs, takes the Aegis, mm -hmm. potentially the Cheese too, and newbie are out of luck. And they need to prevent that from happening, so now yep. they have to reevaluate how they approach the pit. Well, that's when you probably look towards Kaka, right? You look towards the hookshot, that interruption and then allow him just to force into the pit. Your other option is get a lot of money onto a disruptor and finish an Aghanim Scepter. Then that BKB, it won't matter if you get the initiation off. Faith has constantly been poor in this series though. Hasn't been able to buy a Midas at all. Not it's living the, the life of luxury. It's the optimism. He's got Aghanim Scepter in his quick buy when he's got 3.8k net worth. <laughs> poor guy. It's less than 100. Yeah. It's like... I'm gonna buy an item which is more, more valuable than anything I currently own. Glimpse, that's easy. There's your hook shot forward. Do they commit the storm this time around? No. The four staffs gets Arteezy out of the wall. Kind of force a reaction. Maybe trying to force again a BKB charge. Arteezy's being very cool, calm, and collective about it. Holding onto his nine second charge. He has such a big window to pop his BKB though. They, they can't prevent him from casting it. Maybe if he gets like a lucky string of bashes, but that is hardly something that you can rely on, especially with his mass amount of evasion. So yeah, he, he could pop at like 20%, maybe even less, and still feel good about it. I guess maybe the only threat is Astral Imprisonment, or sorry, Astral Sandy's Eclipse. EG but. are coming. Five-man smoke. The Iron Shells are going to push out the mid. KP's the man. A quick four stop. The Torrent will not be connecting because of this. They're X marking as well as pulling him back into the range of the ship. SC defensive imprisonment actually helped him dodge the attack from the ship and they push further away. A blink away from KP. Newbie disengage from EG's aggression. And now they can reinitiate with the blink ravage if they so desire. The only thing Titan to use that fight was just pipe. Okay, EG's going to check Roshan but again. It's like this game wants us to keep going longer and longer. Roshan is almost the max spawn time. Shrine Another minute and a up. half until he's going to come, come into play. They're going to do the long wraparound to the north side. And it's actually the even longer of a wraparound. They're not immediately skirting to the east. They're going to the northeast and potentially cutting south. But nope, they've caught Sumail. Or what they need. Oh, SC's going to push the lane. You have to go for a blind hook to hit that one. I'm surprised he rocketed to the north side over there. I think he was trying to catch up the Ember Spirit. If they caught him with Rocket Fire, that could have been a hook shot into a big play. Hmm? Especially when Ember is still shy of buyback. Only like 200 gold or so. But shy nonetheless. So, keep your countdown, eyes. 52 seconds until Roshan is up. As Nubi try and push this mid lane back out again. They've got the momentum, they get a little bit more insight into where EG is, and Samael attacking the bottom tower. If you can reach it, that tier 3 towers are taking a little bit of chip damage from the push that EG did previously. Yeah, just a tiny... EG, they had illusions to scout inside the pit, now they have nothing. And it's, like, it's been 10 minutes since the last Roshan death. <laughs> and as you mentioned, popular man, he's gonna get some more loving over here. Yep. 
Samael's committed into this fight. Finish the entire Octarine, so no buyback available available for him. It's only the Dark Seer, the Urster, and the OD who currently have buyback on the field. With Roshan up in, well, now. Scattered out. Ember Spirit very quickly away. But Nubia are aware that Roshan is up. So it's up to Mugi if he wants to go in. This is a very swift gank by EG. They, they ran it back and immediately smoke Kaka. They're looking for the clockwork. They're looking for the man who actually like, keeps providing the vision. Hook shot in, tries to create space for the torrent. The frostbite holds him there. The cogs are pushing back. So clockwork is down. He does not have buyback available. So EG, is this your time when you can take Roshan or not? You're still up against Double Ravage. You're still up against the Ursa Warrior. They don't know that Clockwork doesn't have buyback, but they probably don't think that he's that big of a deal in the fight for them. Especially now that BKB is, uh, BKB is up on the this effect. Not a huge deal, and RTZ will start. Well, they smoked. They smoked around the back, out of range. Are they going to loop all the way around? Yeah, you can see the line being drawn. And EG, are they reading this? Zai's in a great position to, to pop the smoke. The issue is they don't really see him. So the blink down, Universal Force up himself up the hillside. Now you Ravage, number one will trigger. Zai caught inside the storm. He can't get the boat off in time. He wants to live, but it won't work. Samal needs more help. Ravage number two is ready to go. KP holding until RTD's BKB is going to wear off while Mugi mopping up the back lines. In comes KP again, holding the Ravage. He's almost down. Now he lets it go. Catching Samal with the OD Aldi. Samal, he can Spearing himself away a little bit further to safety. Clockwork will come back to life again. Crystal Maiden will have to buy her way into this world. As Arteezy enters the pit, the Clockwork Rockets revealing what's going on. Mugi ready to fight if EG will oblige. But for now, they keep the goose stacks up. Arteezy wants to keep this fight going. They know there's no Ravage. Both were committed. Eclipse is down. But the Ursa Warrior is still a formidable force. And you see that open slot he's keeping. He wants the Aegis of the Immortal. He wants to take the cheese if possible. Even keeping both the Vlads and the Demon Edge in his backpack. So he can just jump in and claim Roshan. They need to wait for the BKB up on RTZ though. Or else there's too high of a risk that he gets stun locked. While Nine he seconds. Off road. BKB still not there. KP trying to get some distance. And now, well, there's your x my spot, but Hookshot in. They're pushing doubly Zai away with the four stars, but they're in the back line spine. The storm might be down, but Arteezy walks through it under the cover of that BKB. SC signed to seal a little bit of intelligence against the male. Slide of fist, the boat is coming. It's a little bit too far away, but the back into a torrent is connected. OD will fall. Buyback's available. Something to try and OD will end up committing his KP. Four star him away as well. The Frost is actually keeping Moogie in position, but won't be enough. Not when he can trigger off the cheese. And Standard Scrap fight, SC still so damn big, looking to fight hard, but Arteezy, how is he still alive, doing so much damage? Keeping 3.2k life, that's one way to do it, SC's in the neighborhood. Wants to hit him if he can, Blink Tag is available, not to mention that Hurricane Pike, with the help of Moogie, they go after Arteezy, SC is a double kill, Universe on the run too, SC, do you want to go for that one with the Blink for the double hit, it's a triple kill for the OD, but Arteezy fights back in, they want this Roshan, they want to fight it, the triple spirit, but no, it gets hodged out by the imprisonment, you want to keep fighting with the force up to the high ground, they still have the advantage, 72 stolen intelligence, currently in the hands of SC, EG, the longer they fight, the dumber they get, they want KP, 15 seconds until he's got Ravage, Arteezy's BKB is back on cooldown, they look for SC, his BKB is currently protecting him, keep running, back to the tier 2 towers, KP needs 5 more seconds for Ravage to be available, back to the tier 2, 1 second, does he trigger it, no he doesn't, they try and glitz back out to safety, but it won't be enough. Two big calls dead for Nubi for a very long time. EG want to pressure the issue. They go to the tier three tower on the bottom lane. EG will enter the base. They are one game victory away from taking the grand final and they want the advantage. While they know the two Nubi heroes cannot come back to life again. 
Wow, are you actually going for this? Artidi's looking at the tier 4 towers. The storm is down. He doesn't have his BKB up and running. So they can silence him as well as Ember Spirit. Caught in the edge of it. But now the storm is lost. They find the clockwork. Your Scepter will protect him for the moment. But Artizi beating the tier 4 towers. Disruptor locked possession and brought down. EG, they have the numbers. They have the manpower. They have the strength. The question is, can they finish the job? Ursa wants to fight. Kaka looking to come in. The battery assault. He can't reach him. The cogs have their distance. Ursa jumping in the back lines. Trying to kill off the one person he thinks he can do. The supports looking for the Kung from the Crystal Maiden. But his BKB is worn off. Triple holding there with a frostbite. And now they just let it go. All over Nubi. This could be it. There's no one left. They're all dead. It's done. It's dusted. EG are your champions. Taking the series. 3-1 against Nubi! And an incredible display of teamwork, four staff uses, just kiting all around. They rendered this Ursa useless, playing excellently around the pit, controlling the Roshan and evil geniuses. One stutter along the way in their path to the grand finals victory. Man, what a tense series! It wasn't action-packed all the way through, but you knew it. It was the it was the breath waiting for the storm to connect and EG. Really showing so much patience. Same with Nubi, both deserving to be here in the grand final. A terrific performance from both. Kaka hero running through and uh, just trying to disrupt as much as possible early on, or that kind of mid-game pacing. Not too shocking to see the ball of light here. Disruptor and Clockwork both being picked up, uh, but we seem to see this Ember Spirit constantly grab despite Disruptor being on the enemy team. Is Disruptor really not that good of a counter to Ember Spirit? Is it not really that good of control? I think at this level, especially for some male, you expect to be able to give some tough old combo. And again, if they expect some move to be made on some male in the draft, this is a hero that is, is a little bit flexible. There's still a lane possibility where they can give it to someone else. Uh, they can give it to Arteezy or run it in the safe lane. Also, you have the Crystal Maiden again, which as a high value first pick takes it away from newbie. It just empowers all of your lanes that much more. I think picking that early is a big You'll be going with the Clockwork, one of the rising heroes of the last patch and of this tournament as well. Again, being able to fill different roles, enabling multiple combos. I'd love to see what direction. Yeah, I mean, Disruptor, like you said, you could slight dodge the glimpse, but in a likely scenario where there's a big team fight going on, there's probably a lead stun that goes on the Ember just drop a Static Storm on top. So I, I think at the end of the day, Newbie is still very happy that they have the Disruptor into the Ember. At the same side, I, I don't think EG is like, oh my god, they have Disruptor, we can't pick Ember all. I, I feel like uh, on both sides, they're relatively happy with, with the heroes that they got. Yep, I think uh, the Clockwork was also probably a little bit of a deny pick too. Certainly could have been an option there with the CM that's been one of his most successful allies when you're running it in that support role. A lot easier to uh, open those lanes. But Disruptor, yeah, he's just one step of the solution to the Ember Spirit. It'll be just like that Puck. You can do a lot of the same similar things to dodge or to glimpse with that hero. Port up against and uh, we will receive a ban on the Enchantress, so Evil Geniuses won't have to worry about the possible problems that uh, in that mid game. Not gonna ban away the Drill Ranger. Is there any danger of Evil Geniuses turning this into a fast push strategy? I think with the Ember Core reveal, the well for Evil saw plenty of the Darks here plus the Kunkka, so the combination of the boat, the vacuum, we'd have the Iron Shell combo on top of the Ember Spirit been pretty popular before, but he does suffer up against the Disruptor in lane sometimes, can control you uh, post-surge. And help build into four staffs though for the, uh, the Clockwork Cogs, but indeed we shall get our Tide Hunter, so we've already discussed kind of the issues that could be there up against the Ember Spirit, but with the heavy team fight coming in from the Kunkka with that rum buff, now if you can set up with the Tide Hunter, it's much like the song from the Naga Siren, big AoE kind of control and try and layer on top with the Static Storm, so if they can get that right synergy between our Tidehunter and our Disruptor, you can just win teamfight after teamfight. Yeah, I think EG will once again stick with the three self-sufficient core type of they've had, especially since this is a double roam from the Maiden and Conqueror. 
all of the newbie heroes right now are a bit level dependent to reach optimal effectiveness. And that could be an issue for them if these two are going around just winning lanes. So what would you say a strong, self-sufficient safe laner would be that could go up against the Titan? Because we saw the effectiveness of uh, previously the Drill Ranger being able to kind of keep the Tidehunter at bay, not able to get any sort of laning phase farm. You want a similar kind of strategy here. I feel like Weaver is a very strong pick here. You get the good lane against the Tide Hunter. It's it's tough against Disruptor, because obviously Glimpse into Zack Storm is always a thing, but I mean, he already has to deal with the Ember, and uh, it's one of RTZ's best heroes. Yeah. Do, do you think they would dare just raise her again? I mean, he is someone who can kind of feed off of the... Uh, oh, finally! He's here! Okay, so we'll get a different kind of a tanky hero. We've been talking Bristleback ignored completely throughout the series, despite being a major talking point for what felt like the past two best of threes before it. Every time we talk about Bristleback, we always mention Ursa's the hero that could beat him, right? Mm -hmm. Ursa's here. If you have the control that holds you in place for a direction, though, which is something that Stackstorm doesn't do, despite being quite a bit of that, you know, control element, your silence and you everything, can still turn. you can still turn quite okay. a bit. So they do kind of still need something, it feels like, uh, from Newbie. Normally, we'd leave, we would look to the Legion Commander with the Tidehunter already done. So, could be a Shadow, uh, like a Shadow Blade mid, someone to go for the Silver Edge, perhaps. Are we going to have Bristleback in our off lane or our safe lane? That's, that's a good question. This seems a little bit more unlikely with the picks right now, but Void is also a possibility that some team back, obviously, with the time dilation or lockdown. It doesn't synergize necessarily that well with their lineup, though. I'm not sure if a newbie would go in that direction. Yeah, three other melee heroes. One hell of a feat. Kind of like a, uh, a Lena, perhaps, from Newbie, if they wanted to just ship that Ursa. One of those Silver Edge carriers could give them quite a bit of right click, even some additional stuns just to follow up uh, a very balanced hero. Could even think about perhaps an Invoker, too, although we haven't uh, been blessed with one yet today. There's still a Shadow Fiend, a Silver Edge carrier, the Batman Clockwork. suggests that they want to be safe lane. I just love that mid with the synergy with Wandering their way here on this last band for evil geniuses. What don't they want to see? What lanes don't they want? I wonder how willing they are to send that Ursa in mid lane as well. And well, maybe likewise, evil geniuses could still even pick up a separate mid hero themselves. They've got every single role open, potentially, right? Yep. They could do safe lane ember, mid bristleback, off lane bristleback. Like every single position could be open if they really wanted to change the lane. So they ban away the Storm Spirit, a frequent pickup versus the Bristleback. They would do a fine matchup versus Ember as well. And they go for the Darks here. Okay. That combination. So, Kunkka, nice strong frontline hero with some sustain. Probably the best universe hero that's left, I would say, in this situation. If we were going to go that way, again, the Iron Shell, the Vacuum. Very balanced draft here from Evil Genius. This is the kind of stuff we kind of look at for those like game three scenarios near the end. This, you'd almost think it was best of five with something like that, but I feel pretty good about what Evil Geniuses have brought out. OD. Okay, so they're gonna mix it up and go for the, uh, the lane win. That's the thing here though, with the brisk champion. Like the newbie crack after that game. After all, newbie is a team that has suffered to actually be able to close out tournaments, right? Yes. They oftentimes Ball, second, third place, not really claiming the trophy of any of these lands. Especially overseas. Like, they could do it domestically, like Jack pointed out, but this is uncharted territory, I would say. All right, our draft for game number four about to be unveiled. Nyx Assassin and Crystal Maiden have been the one-two bands from Evil Geniuses in our last two games. Newbie, every single game have gone for the Wisp Tree. This time around, Tree and Puck. Good call by my analyst. Okay, so not the one we expected, though. I have to say, I'm surprised. I would have thought Tree would be the one you let through over the aisle. Maybe the thought that um, Tree is a simpler hero doesn't revolve around having a strategy dedicated to the aisle. So maybe if they haven't been playing it all too much and you're, you're not uh, uh, very practiced on it, it might make more sense to go for a Tree in that situation. So kind of understandable then. And Evil Genius is not opting to pick up the Wisp that was yep. offered to them. That was their right, as first pick, to be able to grab that one. Instead, they go to the Crystal Maiden, which was actually what they were doing in game number one, right? Banning Nyx and Sand King, those Kaka, versatile 3-4 heroes, and then also taking the Crystal Maiden away from, uh, from Newbie. 
It, it could just be that EG feels like Newbie is not a strong IO team, so they are likely to not pick it up for themselves. Um, and they could grab it a little bit later. And you see Newbie, even though they have option to pick up the IO, they don't. Uh, but likely will be banned out on the second. Yeah, and I think this Disruptor is a fantastic pick. Uh, I thought it was one of the best played heroes they've had uh, on Newbie's side right. so far throughout this series. And it also counters out a lot of those heroes. Like, yes, the puck is gone, but the IO is still left in. So it's the IO plus one. It's a great counter to that. And then the Ember Spirit, too, coming out to, from Sumail. Possibly, of course, the flexibility. We've seen it through this tournament. I don't want to completely discount it, but more than likely, it will be Sumail in the mid lane, especially after such a performance like that. You've just got yourselves another counter. And we have this whole idea of how do you handle the clockwork during the draft? expect him to go how can you prep your lanes for either this the chance of that is actually relatively low right and you'd need a profit or something and NP work but yeah, yeah. I, I don't i don't think we're gonna see a draw here but uh, in terms of kp heroes we will again lose ourselves the enigma and we hearken back to tide hunter up against the Amber Spirit, very risky, of course. Got to make sure you're going to hit that Ravage. Certainly do not want to miss. And uh, I'm sure they're also going to want a little bit more information. Maybe we'll get ourselves a position one. Okay. Right. It's going to be uh, still a little bit of that flexibility. We've seen plenty of the matchups of the Ursa versus the Ember Spirit in the mid. And uh, this will leave that option open for them as the draft progresses. So this is kind of like, hey, we're denying you the Sumail mid Ember. You could, you could put it there. You're going to have a huge lane disadvantage. Uh, and of course, Newbie is a great Ursa lineup already. Uh, they picked that against Phoenix earlier today, but I, I, they, they love the hero. They'll pick it without without Phoenix in the game. I think he's also been very successful against Ember Spirit in a lot of drafts too. And any of these very elusive heroes, right? It only takes that one stun, you know, the multi-step solution. One Definitely. person just holds him in place. You try and burst him down as fast as possible. Flame Guard not going to assist you here. Evil geniuses need to try and figure out, okay, so but what do we do here? Like, where is our pacing? Uh, what are we going to find? Do we need to think about some other options in terms of the lane base? Because uh, they're not going to have that last pick. They're not going to have the final option to see where Newbie's going to send this bear. I wonder if we'll see a Tusk here. It's a hero that we've seen some teams favor a lot. I like the Tusk here. So, yeah. but it feels like some kind of save for all of the single target that you have useful for them, especially if that Ember Spirit does feel a bit vulnerable. Yeah, the Frozen Sigil in particular is not very effective against Ursa, but still it's just scouting for the Roshan and whatnot. But instead it's going to be a Kunkka. So my, my worry for EG right now is you have two backliners that have no defense for themselves when Ursa jumps on. Unless Kunkka hits a torrent on himself, which is, you might just be dead before your cast animation. Once the Ursa jumps in, so... EG is having a lot of confidence that the positioning is going to be good and they're going to have some really strong frontliners that Ursa needs to like bypass before he could jump to the back line. Figure out exactly what it will be for Universe as well.